I'm Victoria Rose. Before we get um, into the Q&A questions, um, this video is sponsored by Stereo app and I thought that this would be a good video to do with this. So right here is what the Stereo app looks like. It is a live streaming talking app and I'm going to go live with my friend Beck. She's another autistic girl, which honestly, her and I actually haven't talked yet. We're gonna speak for the first time, February 2nd, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, so be there on the app. So you can get the app links below. But um, this is what the avatar looks like. It's making money as alternatively. So I think that is an interesting way that people don't really think of that you can make money is- um, You know, smelling things, like knowing what food actually looks like when it's gone off, trusting your senses, you know, really. Yeah, and I think that- I like it because I can connect with you guys. You guys can send me in like voice comments and I can respond I'm to gonna, them. I'm um, gonna play this audio <laughs> message. Okay. Were there any animals living inside your cop house? <laughs> it's more interactive. Sorry, I've said this line like three times right now. It's more interactive than YouTube live streaming where I could actually hear you guys and we could actually communicate in that way because there's not that many people there and it's more personal and chill. So that's what that is. Me and my sister, we've done two different streams already and it's about uh, girls who live alternatively and you can uh, listen to those if you want. Um, they're still up on my profile. It's my sister Tansy that has the Bell Tent, the Bell Tent tour that we did. And then the next stream I'm gonna have is going to be talking about female autism with an actual autistic girl. So join the broadcast down there and then you'll get notified whenever we go live. So let's get into this video. I had uh, some questions on Instagram that I wanted to answer. There's a lot to say and I'm not gonna be able to say everything in one video. Let me know if you want me to make any more videos like this. I don't, I feel a bit uncomfortable doing it and I'll tell you why. I got diagnosed as an adult not even that long ago. The thing is about getting diagnosed, it's like it doesn't change anything. Everything that I've ever struggled with and everything, it makes it make more sense, but it doesn't change anything. And I almost feel guilty at this point in my life as an adult to even say anything about it because I've lived my life without having a name for it. I've suspected for a very long time, and you guys can go even to past videos, like years and years ago, I would kind of mention it sometimes, but I would never really talk about anything about it. Female autism is, and this is why this is titled female autism. I'm not excluding men in this, or guys, or boys, but female autism is so different, and it's it hasn't been, um, until recently, it has not been talked about. It hasn't been uh, brought to people's awareness. And even to my own, I'm like, I resonated so much with autistic stuff, but it's like, oh, that's just something that males have. And also like the stereotypical, and that's why I get really mad about how it's represented in media, because it's always so stereotypical. It's like Sheldon or like Spock, like the, the, that's just what people think when they think autism. And it is not that. And that's why I'm kind of making this video right now because I've, I've kind of gotten into the autistic community a little bit after getting diagnosed and realizing there's so many more people that are just like me. I haven't had a lot of validation in my life and me trying to say anything about how I've, about how life is kind of hard just feels wrong because there's so many people that have things so much worse than me and, but that doesn't discredit, you know, the struggles that we go through. I think so many people have so many different struggles but somebody might have bipolar, or somebody might have schizophrenia, or somebody might have borderline. I'm allowed to talk about it. It's not doing any harm. If anything, it might help people. And yes, there are people that are worse off than me, but there's always someone worse off than you. So I don't think that uh, autism or an autism diagnosis should define you. I don't think that it should be the definition of you. Yes, it is you, it's part of you, but it's not like, hey, I'm, this is just, this is all that I am, because it's not. And I think we'd be careful getting diagnosed later in life to be like, oh, I finally found who I am, because for so long with autism, you kind of don't know who you are. And when you finally find something that's like, wow, this is, this is me, then you maybe go to extremes with things and go too far. I don't want to like make this like an autistic 
um, themed channel. I do want to talk about it sometimes because it is very relevant in my life. But again, I'm not trying to exploit it. I'm not trying to have people feel sorry for me. I'm not, I'm not doing any of those things. That's why I'm pretty cautious with talking about it because I have been a bit invalidated in my life. These things are a bit sensitive. So having said that, the first question is, do people think you're lying? I get this a lot and it's weird. That was the question. Yes, this is why I don't talk about it because it's already hard enough to not know who you are your whole life sometimes and then finally like get some answers and it, it it's all very like it's all very sensitive inside because it's like whoa and then to have people discredit you whenever you're learning this in the process is really devastating because it's like i actually found something that makes things make sense and then when people come at you and uh deval devalidate you and make you feel bad and stuff like that and feel guilt and stuff like that. that's why i don't like to talk about it because it's like i don't i'm set like i'm sensitive in a way especially with this type of stuff with mental stuff things are very fresh for me um so i don't like i have to be careful i don't know why you would want to have autism or say that you do when you don't if it didn't resonate so deeply within you why would you lie about that i don't understand why people think that or think that because usually if you really really struggle with these things your life is not in a happy place and i don't know why i would want that um but yes people think that i'm lying because i can mask really 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 well masking is when an autistic person and this is a lot more present in females because females mask in general neurotypical females mask too but um males the reason you can see the autism so blatantly is because they're uh, socially they don't mask as much as females in general do anyway so that's why it is so different i have always been an actress um that's all i've ever seen life as i remember growing up my whole life i just saw it through a lens and i'd always just act everything out Done. what do you want well i figured since i'm paying you for like ten thousand dollars huh you'd be able to do i was al alone a lot so I was just kind of in my own little world. Uh, I was gonna go to acting school right when I moved out, but then I decided to go to college for theater. I wanted to do acting, but um, who goes to college for theater? It's a stupid decision. And it's because I didn't realize it's just part of me. Like it is, it's masking, it's acting. It's not fake and it's hard to describe what masking really is, but it's, it's I can see all the details of social interactions that people need to do to be able to fit into society. So a lot of, Autistic people, girls anyways that I know, they're very good at acting like um, because it's part of what we have to do to fit into kind of a neurotypical world. Yes, people think that I'm lying because I appear normal or neurotypical. This is, I wanna make this base more so on travel because like I said, my channel isn't an autistic channel. It's about travel, that's what I wanna keep it about. So this one is, what do you struggle most with while traveling? And I thought about this, and I think the things that I struggle most with, not just in, just traveling, um, traveling as an international travel, or just traveling even going into this city or something like that. For me, it's, I need to have my routines. And I have made this work. Just wearing clothes is really uncomfortable for me. Um, I do change clothes very often because they get uncomfortable. I wanna be stylish, <laughs> I just do. But I'm often extremely uncomfortable in my physical body. Um, and what that's like is like I can't focus as much on sometimes enjoying the traveling things that you do when you're traveling because I'm uncomfortable and it's not just social if it's not socially it's physically like there's always something that makes me uncomfortable and I hate that and I th I'd say it's probably one of the biggest things about autism is that you're just always uncomfortable unless you're in this certain environment I always compare it to an exotic um, aquarium animal Unless you're in a certain environment with all these, the, the heat just in the right temperature, the water, lukewarm, whatever. Unless you're there, you're uncomfortable. And it really sucks because you can't take in as much whenever you feel that way. It's, it, it would be like someone stabbing someone with a toothpick and they just have that in and they have to you know, focus on everything else and not the toothpick. It's just always gonna be there and it just makes you uncomfortable and it makes you focus your focus kind of shift elsewhere if, if that can help you understand i'm really bad with directions that's been something that you guys have probably seen i i get lost so much and it's just like i can live in the same area and still get lost it doesn't matter i have very poor coordination and i'm directionally challenged in that regard but i've worked so hard in this for so many years 
So um, I don't get too stressed about it anymore because um, I know things work out in the end. And then being around people too long and not having a space to recover in, that's probably one of the number one things too. I need a space. Like that's why um, when I made my hostel videos, I just hate hostels. I hate places where you can't escape people and you don't have your own little cubby or safe space. I need a safe space. So those are the things that I struggle with most while traveling. It's going to be different for every person and also different for every autistic person. How does stress affect you and what makes you stressed? So too much so social interaction. If I um, know there's a social event coming up, that kind of stresses me out. Plans getting changed. That's another thing with traveling. Like you can't plan things all the time. And this has been a really good exercise for me. And I recommend it for any autistic person to really expand yourself. Um, uh, I hate, 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 hate relying on other people because I can't. People I have found have, are very, very unreliable and it stresses me out if I have to rely on them. Because I like to be, the only reason I like to be in control so much is because I know that I will fulfill what I say that I'm going to. Other people don't do that. Um, relying on other people is so stressful, probably to top. I don't like to be yelled at, that stresses me out. I don't like to be wrong because I try so hard in life to be right that really stresses me out. I get really tired and need more downtime than normal. Whenever I am do get stressed, I, I get really tired and need more downtime and I need to be alone. What really helps me is putting headphones, working out, doing things that, that really just puts me in my own little world where I don't have to interact with people at all. Um, just even just laying down, I just kind of have to lay down kind of often. Um, and I didn't realize that I need this before and not doing these types of things can cause major burnout and I didn't realize the times that I've gotten really burnt out. And burnout can last a really long time. I feel like I've been burnt out for the past year or two now because I have pushed myself so hard. Yeah, I didn't realize my limits. And now I realize, and that's why you guys probably see them a bit different now than I used to be. I pushed myself before, like when I was in Los Angeles, I push myself with like drinking, um, over socializing, adrenaline type of thing. Just I. I pushed myself because I was excited as a new city. I'm like, this is life when I first moved to Los Angeles. And I realized how much I'm paying for that now. So I'm a bit more gentle on myself these days and I try to keep it more chill because if I get burnt out again, I don't want to have to be down for months at a time or another year. I'm hoping to recover from this burnout soon. <laughs> um, and then another thing when I'm stressed, I get obsessed with escaping or fixing the stressor. Um, and that's all I can think about. I can't think about anything else. Um, how do you uh, manage the emotional extremes, the peaks and the lows? I have to logically remind myself that this feeling is not gonna last forever. It doesn't work. So I go on to the next <laughs> method and I usually put myself down for a nap like a baby. Um, and then if I wake up and I'm still feeling bad, which is pretty normal, I kind of just do stuff to just to just get by through the rest of the day and then I put myself to sleep again as best I can so I can wake up and restart on a new day. And that's kind of been my tactic for the past year. I, I will put myself down to sleep because there's no other escape. Um, even in sleep, I have a lot of nightmares and stuff. So um, I'm just, I'm, yeah. It's, it's been a bit more difficult the past year because I've been dealing with everything, burnouts, trauma, uh, COVID stuff, like just, everything so it's been a little bit more difficult does autism prevent you from interacting with local people while traveling and the answer to this is yes and you if you guys have watched my travel videos there's not a lot of local people in them it's because i don't really interact with people usually the reason i like to have a travel partner is because i like to be with someone that i feel safe with and um, i don't like to really use energy meeting new people because it's really exhausting not that i don't want to it's just it's, it's something that I, it's a limit that I kind of have. So this makes, if I'm not traveling with another travel partner, it makes it very lonely and I'm not fully experiencing it. But I do the best I can. This is the way that I, I have to kind of travel because I have to choose where I'm gonna spend my energy. Can you ask people things when you're lost while traveling? Um, yes and no. Sometimes I feel very dependent on people because I feel like an infant or a baby. And I don't know if this is an autistic thing or just me as a person, but I feel very helpless a lot of the time. Um, overwhelmed, just want to cry and, and just have someone tell me it's okay because I feel too overwhelmed to deal with life. But at the same time, I've learned to be very independent because I can't rely on people like that because I am an adult. So I try not to ask for help. I try to just figure things out myself or call my mom. And <laughs> Do you have any stimming behavior as a child? I actually don't know. Um, and I couldn't ask my mom because she didn't really pay a lot of attention to us. So I don't think she would know either. I mean, there are six of us, so she probably gets confused. 
who is who. Were you non-verbal as, verbal as a child? Yes, but only, okay, so I was non-verbal, but only during school when I went to school. Later I was homeschooled because I couldn't do it anymore. But I didn't speak and I physically couldn't speak. And it, um, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I, I, all other kids could speak and I'm like, why is this so hard for me? Uh, when I would try to speak, even if I did try to speak, and I, I would, I would, uh, I would begin the year and I'm like, I'm gonna talk this time, I'm gonna say things. I would try, but for some reason, physically, I couldn't do it. Like it wouldn't project enough or be clear enough for people to understand what I was saying. They wanted to put me in a special program because of the problems, but my parents said no. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm kind of glad that it did. So it was such a big struggle that I just started signing during school and everyone knew me for this. If I were to, if you know, they asked the kids a question or whatever, I would just be like, this would be no, this would be yes. I would say for math, it would be, I would say on my fingers. I couldn't, I couldn't raise my hand to ask for anything because I couldn't project loud enough. So um, I just held, I, I didn't go to the bathroom the whole day during school because I couldn't um, ask to go. And just stuff like that. It was very stressful as a kid. Uh, uh, but then when I got home, I did, I did talk. But the problem with this is that it wasn't normal talking either. I would yell and I would have meltdowns and I'd be so angry all the time and looking back I realized I thought I was a monster I just thought there was something really wrong with me that but now looking back I see why I had those struggles it was really it was hard I'm like why can't I just be normal like why can't I do and I feel I feel bad about like younger me because I was so confused and lost about everything and I'm, I'm glad I didn't have the diagnosis till later but it's like I was so depressed so young like the stress was just so much it was so much and i didn't know how to deal with it and nobody else cared there was no there's never been an escape and that sounds weird but there just hasn't so my family just thought i was really really mean but i was having a lot of meltdowns i didn't know how to communicate what i was what was going on inside i didn't know what was either and looking back i think i was just constantly just completely overwhelmed and i thought i was a monster Whew. What the fuck? We don't cry here. <laughs> How do you handle loud noises while traveling? Loud noises aren't as bad to me as lights and smells. I'm really sensitive to smell, probably the most, and lights. Um, also, I always have headphones with me wherever I go. That blocks out the whole, like I don't like to go outside without walking around with, like I have these ones right now. I used to be obsessed with like these kind, like they're corded, I could just take them off and on as I please. It's also soothing for me to have a constant noise rather than the ups and downs of normal outside life. Do you stumble on your words a lot while having a conversation? So with this, I'm really, like I said, I'm really good with masking. So if I am prepared for a conversation and I'm not burnt out, I can have, like I'm talking right now, I can do very, very well with that. It's um, all in the script, like I know the scripts, I know sometimes like the body movements, I don't know how good I am with that. I might be a little stiff, but I'm really good with that. But if I'm not prepared for one or if I'm in a burnout, it's so strange how I could be like this one person and then later when I'm too burnt out to handle anything, I'm this other weird stuttering fool. <laughs> like uh, I realized lately, like if I'm having a conversation with my best friend, she's usually the only one who could see me in this state. I'll, I'll try to be saying something and I'll just like, I'll try to be getting everything out and I, like, I can't say everything and I'll kind of talk like this. I feel really stupid and I don't like to have even conversations like that with her or anyone that I know. So I try to be very careful when I have conversations because if I, if I have a conversation during that mode, it's, it's like you might as well be talking to a brick wall. Like I'm, I'm either gonna be stuttering, trying to say something and I can't convey it, or I'm just gonna be like. The most difficult thing about ASD, I would say it's just the exhaustion. I, I feel like I'm a robot. This is how it feels. I feel like I'm a robot with a short circuit for a brain. And it'll be like, bzzz. I'll like have a spurt of energy, bzzz. but then I'll just be like, Whoo. it'll just be like, ow. Even sleep doesn't make me not tired. What are relationship red flags that could be missed by an autistic person, especially females? And this is something that I want to talk about maybe in a different video of relationships and and um, autism and females and stuff because there's so much to talk about that in that regard as well. But briefly here, I think we are very overly trusting because we don't really have the capacity in ourselves to be malicious or have ulterior motives. And we don't really have the best empathy, so we cannot understand why anyone else would have those motives either. 
So we just trust that everyone is out for our best interest and, and we, we don't know the red flags because we don't know. Social cues are really hard to learn and there's, they're very detailed and there's so many of them that we'll never learn all of them. And we kind of have to trust other people around us to tell us things. And when we trust the wrong person and they tell us the wrong things, we believe them anyways because we're a bit naive in that sense. And I still don't know what properly to believe in a lot of situations. So we don't know what's normal. So we trust people will take advantage of that and have taken advantage of that. And I still don't know if I'm right or wrong. It's, most of it's guessing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a good guesser, but sometimes you can't guess these things and I'm pretty oblivious to some things that I shouldn't be. Um, how do I know when I'm masking? It all feels so exhausting. Personally, I'm masking if I'm communicating with any person and I've realized this and it sounds sad, but it's just the truth. Whether, it doesn't matter who it is, no, no matter how close I am to them, I have to mask a bit just because it's just the way that it is. And it's tiring no matter what. Um, masking is essential to being autistic. Uh, if you want to fit in at all in the world, if you want to have friendships or relationships with people, and it's just a sad truth, we have to fit into a neuro neurotypical world. Most of us are very inward people and we have problems expressing that outwardly and it's very tiring for us to do so. So just because someone's autistic and they don't speak or whatever, it doesn't mean they don't have a whole entire life and personality on in the inside. They just have a hard time expressing that. Does autism affect your life more or less than people think? It affects it more. I hide so much from you guys, from people that I'm with, even like everybody. Like I have to, I have to because I don't want to be seen as weak and I don't want to be seen as lazy. I don't want to be seen as these negative things that people would perceive of me because people misjudge pe autistic people all the time. Uh, a lot of people, number one, they would not like me. I already have people that don't like me because I choose to just not interact or this or that because to them in a societal thing, I'm being a stuck up bitch or I'm being lazy or I'm being this or that. It's not what I'm being, but it comes across that way. So um, I have to hide that, like I just do. And that means that there's a lot of things that I have to do to be able to recoup. I like to come out and be around people only whenever I'm ready to. Um, ready to entertain or perform um, and that sounds bad, but it's just the way that it is a lot of my time is actually spent recovering or um, Doing routines to help me cope. Do you have any stims? Not really. I do normal things that um, I think everyone does I'm just trying to think of how I would normally I don't really have like noticeable noticeable stims. Um, I do play with my fingers a lot I've realized but these things that I do I don't really realize that I'm doing them So I, I don't even know really and I don't think anyone observes me enough to even know um, when I'm really stressed I'll rock a little bit if I'm really really stressed or like on the verge of having a meltdown I will rock a little bit and I will um, play with my fingers even more. I'll self-soothe by um Petting myself a lot. Or when I'm really happy, sometimes I'll, I'll rock a little bit. And I'm very stiff in my movements. I, I have weird body control movements and um, it's something I can't really control. Like if I'm like happy, I'll just be like, like stiff. I'm very stiff as a person. Um, but I do, I do it when I'm expressing um, something extreme, like extreme stress, I'll, I'll like go like this a lot when I'm stressed. I'm trying to figure out what I do. I have, I'd have to actually do it. Like I don't, in the moment, I don't really know what I'm doing, but yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you think someone with more severe autism can travel and explore? And I say yes to this, of course. Anything is possible, especially with everything that I've overcome as a person. I used to have to wear sunglasses inside when it was daytime. I've gone from that to being able to do all this stuff and it is possible, you just have to set up a life for yourself. I push myself and I still push myself all the time. Normal things that people think are hard to me are pretty easy just because I've desensitized and pushed myself so much. I've gone through a lot of things in life. I used to have meltdowns, I used to have severe anxiety, depression, I still have those. I used to have anorexia, I, you know, all these things I manage in a different way now. So there, everything is still there, but I've learned as an adult now to manage these um, in a more uh, sustainable way. Otherwise, if I wasn't, then I probably couldn't do these things to be honest, but I've, this is very important to me. Traveling is a more natural lifestyle to me. It's more natural to me because I don't have to be in a societal norm. And that is so important to me that I make all the other things work and fit together. And yes, it's going to be hard. It's always going to be hard. There is an escape from the hardness of it. I'm sorry this video was so long. There's so many more questions, good questions I wasn't able to answer. You can ask any questions below in the comments. The video got cut off before I could say stay extra trust her. I love you very much. And stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be more adventures in New York City. Love you guys. Yeah, are you gonna try try a yard seal again? Yeah, I I I have three signs.